are you doing? Welcome to TIFF TV. This is week four of the um, series that we're doing called the life cycle of a photographer. Last week, if you remember, we talked about uh, considering whether you should register your business or just register it as a name. So this week now, we just want to look at, okay, you decided to register your business and or name, and um, what are the mistakes you should avoid in the name that you call your business? This is something that honestly, a lot of us, you know, overlooked when we were starting out. And in hindsight, we, we really wish we had done the research and take the time to really think about the name that we're going to call our business because really, the name is going to be foundational and it's something you're going to hear all the time, every day. It's going to be on your social media sites and if it's not the name that you like, it's going to grate on your nerves. So take the time to make sure you get the right name that you feel reflects the heart and soul of, of who you are. So let's start with the typical, the eight. There are many, many mistakes to, to naming, but I'll just name what I consider the top eight. To, to arriving at a, what we call a bad name for your business. The first mistake would be decision by committee. Asking your friends, your neighbors, your family, what you should call your business. You're gonna have such a wide, varied assortment of names, and it'll just make the decision and the selection harder to choose, okay? The second one is what we call smashing it together. Um, think about this, uh, a technology company that uh, is service-oriented calling itself techno stuff. We just, you know, it's such a bland name that really doesn't speak to, to anything um, creative or really specific about what they do. It's very obscure. The third mistake would be what we call the alphabet soup. It's very similar to the second one, where you just throw, throw names out there and see what sticks. For example, you're a photographer and you want to do a lot of, you know, a lot of images, a lot of jobs, and you call yourself Pixmania. You, know, you just throw the name aside, you know, you throw a name together because also you're looking for a domain that will match your website name and domain names are taken on Instagram or on Facebook or Twitter. So you keep just mishing, smashing things together to come up with a name. Big mistake because the kind of name you come up with might not even make sense at the end. The fourth one is using a name that's so plain that it really doesn't stand out for the crowd. For example, when you think about names like General Electric or General Motors, you know, they could do that because these are companies of a bygone era and they were the first of their kind. Imagine calling yourself General Photography Limited. I mean, really, you're not going to stand out. In fact, you might just be a laughing stock. So avoid general bland names as well uh, when deciding what name to use. Another big mistake is naming your company after the region you come from. What do I mean by this? Um, think, look, think about KFC. KFC started out as Kentucky Fried Chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken was based in uh, Kentucky, the state of Kentucky, in the U.S. It was started by Colonel Sanders. But um, within, within a few years, the franchise had grown and now it's worldwide. And what did they have to do? They had to drop Kentucky Fried Chicken from their name and just call themselves KFC. So you really want to think about, don't call yourself Nairobi photographers or Lagos photographers, or don't restrict yourself to a region because you never know where your growth trajectory might take you. Another mistake is turning your name into a cliche, like Titan, or Summit, or Apex. You know, it doesn't really communicate anything but bigness. It really doesn't communicate anything. You want to pick a name that, that grabs and, and very succinctly explains what you're doing. Like one I like when I hear it is Cube Movers. Um, it's a moving company, clearly, and when they say Cube, it just communicates to me efficiency in, in their services. You know, they're, they're neat, they're tidy, they're efficient, and they're quick. So you want to think of the kind of name that can communicate something to your audience or your, your particular target market. Um, the seventh mistake would be maybe picking a name for sentimental reasons. You know, you have a story behind the name you pick, and you love it, so you pick the name. For example, maybe there are four brothers who started a photography company and they decide to call themselves Four Brothers Limited. It makes for an interesting story, but again, it doesn't tell your audience of what you do or why you're doing what you do. So you want to be careful about picking names for sentimental reasons. And the last one is when you do select a wrong name, and you will know in time that you selected the wrong name, sticking to it and refusing to change it. 
For example, if Kentucky Fried Chicken remained Kentucky Fried Chicken, where would they be today? It would be a marketing blunder. So these are things you want to think about, what to avoid, and uh, next week we'll look at the best tips now to picking a good name. So again, comments, questions at the bottom. We'll try and answer them during the week. And don't forget to subscribe so that you keep up to date with what we're producing every week. See you on TV.